Iceland, the land of fire and ice, a land of dramatic change. Its inhabitants have been adapting to one of the most changing and challenging environments on Earth since the Vikings first settled there centuries ago. Earthquakes, flash floods, volcanoes and plate tectonic effects continue to shape the island while the surrounding warm Gulf Stream and ocean currents sustain its temperate climate. This unique island covers 40,000 square miles and has more than 3,000 miles of coastline. It's home to some 300,000 people, most of whom live in its capital, Reykjavik. The Icelandic people are nearly 100% literate and enjoy an average lifespan of 80 years, making them among the longest living people of any nation. Tapping the unique resources of their dramatically changing environment, Icelanders are proud of their country's transformation to renewable energy resources, particularly their innovation in geothermal technologies. June 2010. Over 50 scientists from Europe, the Middle East, Canada and the United States, along with scientists from Iceland, came together for a NATO-sponsored conference to explore climate change adaptation and its implications on a local and global scale. Given the dramatic geophysical changes over the last several hundred years, as well as recent events, Iceland was an ideal location for this important workshop one where leading experts could explore multiple dimensions of climate change interactions, vulnerabilities of living systems, climate change impacts and adaptive management implications for coastal systems, inland water systems, and security for all nations and their people. Over the course of the workshop, scientists shared their work on a wide range of topics from planning on global and regional scales to methods and tools for adaptive management to the integration of social and physical sciences required to address emerging management needs. Icelandic scientists provided first-hand insight into the recent eruption of the volcano Eyjafjallajökull that not only affected air traffic for millions throughout the world, but had and continues to have implications for new local adaptation measures. Adaptation, especially as it relates to social, security and policy implications of climate change, was the focal point throughout the plenary and breakout group discussions. Iceland's president, Olafur Ragnar Grimson, welcomed the group and shared his country's unique geophysical characteristics that enabled its transformation of energy systems from oil and coal to 100% hydro and geothermal. But after the 1970s, Iceland was indeed the poorest country in Europe. And through my lifetime, this country has transformed itself over to becoming the leading clean energy country in the world. He also underscored that the time for the world to take action on climate change is now. It is necessary for us to move towards the future on two tracks. One is the transformation of our energy systems in every possible way, at every level. But the other track, is unfortunately that we must start preparing our societies and the international community for the disastrous consequences of uh, global warming. Although we hope that we wouldn't need such preparation. With the eruption of Ayafaya Yakahut, volcanic ash now covers this once green mountain range and the floodplain below, giving participants an opportunity to experience change and adaptation firsthand. Surrounded by an environment that most of the participants had never experienced before provided many with a new perspective. This is amazing. I mean, to be here, uh, you know, close after the, the volcano had erupted and being able to see the evidence of that impact. It brings a certain reality to change and dynamism in general. We just visited the volcano. The forces of nature are so much more powerful than me. Than small human beings can be <laughs> and nonetheless we do have an influence on the cycle of materials and, of, and on the air. It's amazing to be in the middle of action, both scientific action in our conference and kind of geothermal actions with volcanoes and changing weather and it's really exciting. 
In a world now vulnerable to the complex effects of climate change, adaptation becomes increasingly important. The next steps we all take will be critical. Climate change is real. There's a consensus on that. There was a realization that we need to think about what we can do about the impacts of climate change. Well, it's definitely shown me that adaptation is more about people and institutions and the science is just there to, to help facilitate decisions being made. I think the most important thing is to maintain contact with each other and through this network that we've established here and, and to not let, let it die. The most important of this meeting is that we reach a different level, a qualitative level. We have been able to go a step further in the communication between our scientists and therefore in the communication for the rest of the world in terms of climate change. The takeaway is, wow, important problem. We need to bring many minds to bear. The people factor is especially important. We've got more and more science, but we really need to begin thinking about how to involve people both in understanding that science and in making decisions or participating in those decisions. With the workshop over, efforts are underway to share what participants have learned through papers, presentations, and a book to be released by Springer in 2011. For organizations around the world, like the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the outcomes of this workshop will provide valuable insight and direction for shaping innovative strategies and plans for ensuring human safety, protecting infrastructure, and safeguarding environmental security in coastal regions and other environments. The type of problem that we're looking at here, climate change, of all the scales that we have are really problems that take many, many disciplines to answer correctly. Uh, an individual discipline might tackle the problem and do something with it, but actually it takes the social sciences, the harder sciences, working together to be able to do this type of thing.